Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 35. This starts a new series, Meet Rails 5. This is part one, Tour the New Rails Generator. In this episode, we'll take a tour of the directories and files that have been added or changed in Rails 5 from Rails 4. If you'd like to code along, all you need to have is Ruby 2.2 or greater installed. That's the earliest Ruby that Rails 5 will support. I've opened up my terminal with two tabs. First, I'm going to make sure of my Ruby version. I have the most stable version at the time of this recording. Now let's look at the version of Rails that I have. I have Rails 5.0 already installed. If you don't specify the number, it's always going to install the latest stable version of Rails. So in order to install a previous version, I need to put in the exact version. So we'll do underscore 4.2.7 and then another underscore new and we'll just call it Rails 4 generator. And that runs through creating what Rails 4 knows how to create and bundles that up. Then in my other tab, I'm going to go ahead and just put Rails new Rails 5 generator. That runs the installation and bundles it. Now let's take a look at what's new. In the app directory, there are two new directories. First up, channels, which is the biggest new feature of Rails 5. Channels are what Action Cable creates. So Action Cable seamlessly integrates WebSockets with the rest of your Rails application. So it's all about real-time interactions with your app and making that easier through channels. I'll talk more about that in a later episode. Another new directory is a jobs directory. Now we already had jobs with Rails 4. This folder and the file included used to be created when generating your first job. Instead, they want all that set up when you run the Rails generator. Let's take a look. I have both of these folders open so you can see them side by side. Rails 5 on the left, Rails 4 on the right. And let's take a look at our app directory. Opening both of those up, you see that there's two new folders, two new directories, channels and jobs. Now let's look at our assets directory. There is one new directory in assets called config, and that has a new file called manifest.js. Sprockets 4 needs this to tell Sprockets what assets to precompile. It includes the images, JavaScript files, and style sheets, You would need to add a line for fonts if necessary. You used to define this in a config file. Instead, they've moved the config to the assets directory, and that makes sense since that's what you're changing. In our JavaScripts directory, there is another new directory called channels, and this is where the JS files go for channels when you use the channel generator. This is the convention. They're saying, hey, put all of the JavaScript files for channels in this directory. And then there is a new file called cable.js. This requires the JS for action cable and sets up the defaults. Looking back at our text editor, let's open up that assets directory so you can see the new folder called config. And you can check out this new file. It's a JavaScript file, which they may change in future versions, but right now it's a JavaScript file saying all the things that Sprockets needs to precompile. If you have more things, you can add it right there. Now we'll look at our JavaScripts folder and see how it has a new empty folder for channels. And that's not in Rails 4. And then here is that new cable.js. See how it's requiring those JavaScripts. And then just has defaults for you. Next, let's look at our brand new channels directory. Inside of that channels directory, there is an action cable directory, and that has two new files. First is the channel.rb, and that inherits from action cable channel base, and then connection.rb, and that inherits from action cable connection base. Again, throughout Rails 5, when it generates a new project, it will be including these configuration files even before you create these resources. Same goes for our new job directory. It has an application job.rb file that inherits from active job base. 
This directory in that file used to be created when you created your first job. Now it comes with the Rails generator. And again, same goes for our mailers directory. It has one new file, that application mailer.rb, that inherits from action mailer base, and it used to be created when the first mailer was created. And one more directory that has that new file, models, now comes with an application record RB file to inherit from active record base. In Rails 5, they're really trying to make this directory and file structure more standard for every directory, where the files need to inherit from base modules. Let's take a look at our new channels directory, and we have that application cable directory, where we have our files for channels. And we see that it inherits from action cable channel base, and connection inherits from action cable connection base. Now we'll look at our jobs folder. It comes now with the generator and has that file we're used to, but now it comes with the generator. Let's look at our mailers. Again, mailers folder was there before, and now it has our application mailer file. And lastly, looking at our models, you see that it didn't have a file before. Now it has the application record file that inherits from active record base. Not to leave out our views directory, there are also two new files in there. The layouts directory has those files, mailer.html.erb and mailer.text.erb. And these layout files used to be created with the mailer generator. Again, that's coming now with the Rails 5 generator. Also, notice a new syntax for Turbo Links 5. It now says TurboLinks track reload as opposed to true. Let's take a quick look at the differences. So in Rails 4, the layout just had that one application layout file. Now we have the ones for mailers as well. And now taking a look at our application layout file, you see that new syntax for TurboLinks. Now, outside of our app directory, other directories have changed as well. In our bin directory, there is one new file called update, and that helps update the development environment automatically. Lots of changes in our config directory. There are five new files. Two are in our initializers directory. Now there's a file called application controller renderer that will help you bypass a controller if need be and then a new framework defaults, which helps with upgrading to Rails 5. Then just in the config directory, we have a new file for cable.yml, and that's where you can set your adapter for asynchronous threads. It recommends in production to use Redis. And now there's a puma.rb, which sets defaults for the Puma server that comes now automatically with Rails. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Also, there's a spring.rb file that tells Spring to watch additional common files. Taking a quick look at our bin folder and seeing that new file called update. Now let's look at all of those new config files. So opening it up, you'll see in the main directory those files, and then let's look at initializers. Let's open up that new application controller renderer file. It's all commented out. You only need to put things in this file if you're bypassing a controller. Now let's look at the new framework's defaults, and you'll see it sets a few configurations that will be different, and so that helps with migrating from Rails 4. Now we can quickly look at the Puma file and the Spring file. Oh, and let's take a look at the cable.yml file. And here are some things you can change if you need to change them. In the public directory, there are two new empty files, an Apple Touch Icon Pre-Composed PNG and Apple Touch Icon PNG. The lack of these files were causing some server errors, so they've gone ahead and put that in. If you want a little bit more information about that, I've linked to the issue there. And just to show you that they're there, it's just like the favicon, that it's empty, but it's there for the servers. Now for our gem file, there are a couple of additions to that. Like I mentioned, there's a move away from Webbrick as a server for the development environment. Instead, they'll be using Puma, and that saves time later, especially if you're deploying to Heroku. 
It gives you a production server even though you're running it on your local machine. Then they've added Listen and Spring Watcher Listen so you can track changes in your files if you want to. And then finally, it's adding in TNZ Info Data because Windows does not include Zone Info files. So they've added that into the standard gem file. Let's compare the gem files side by side. So as you scroll down, you'll see that new Puma gem right in there at the top. The rest is pretty much the same. There is some more information about Redis, figuring you are going to need a Redis server at this point. And then here are those additional development gems. And then the TNZ info at the bottom. Finally, the README has changed its file type. It's now a markdown file instead of a text, and you can click on markdown to read more about that and how you can utilize that to make your README easier to read. Again, I'll show this side by side that the README now has markdown in it in Rails 5 as opposed to text. Here is some further reading. Absolutely read through the 5.0 release notes. There's lots and lots of information. It's a long read, but it's worth it. And go ahead and check out Action Cable. I'll be covering a little bit more of that in future episodes. So go ahead and read the docs on Action Cable. Then here are two blog posts that I found helpful. One about the Sprockets 4 manifest that you saw in your assets folder. And then one more about the application record in Rails 5 and why we have that new file in our models folder. That's it for the tour of the Rails 5 generator. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a long one. Be sure to head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up to my mailing list so that you get the next installments in this Rails 5 series. And if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, head on over there and hit subscribe. You get the videos just a little bit before everyone else. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching and see you soon.